It is Dental Thursday and Farrier Day. So we have Elijah here. He's gonna be doing farrier work and a lot of the ones on farrier list are also on my dental list. So we're gonna tag team as he finishes them up. I'll do dentals and if one of them by chance needs sedation, I'll be here to sedate while I'm doing dental. So we're working and again, the treatment room is really good. Even though it's not as cold this morning as it has been, it's better than being outside. So wonderful day to get some good things knocked off the to-do list. Wait, are we good with him? Yep. Okay, great. Are you ready for him? Yep. Okay, I will turn him over to you. I am pulling up the medication for, to sedate Cowboy for his dental. Okay, thank you, sir. This is a speculum to hold his mouth open while I can get in there and do my work. And these little obity mouse. You don't have a whole lot of room to work in, so. Okay, little buddy. Just rinsing out the hay that might be in there. Good job, sweetie. Now he's wanting to bite it a little bit and keep me from getting back there. So I'm gonna to have to open it a little wider just for a few minutes. Cause I don't wanna leave his jaws like wide open for forever. So it's one of those I'll do a little bit. I'll let it back down, go back in to that spot. Cause the bottoms aren't that bad. There's a ramp on the very back. So I'm gonna let it down for just a second. Give him a little relief on his jaws. I feel a little bit on the top there we need to get. Okay, sweetheart. Yeah, I'll make a note and we'll go back next time and you're getting, you're so, getting so much age and you keep your weight so well, I'm not gonna mess with what's not broke on the front. We got your cheek teeth good. We'll keep an eye on your incisors. Okay, he is good. They weren't bad to not knowing when the last time they were done. He had hooks on the, there's my chart. So he had hooks on his upper premolars, which is normal on that on both sides. Uh, in the back, on the bottom, around these two, the premolar and first molar, he had a little bit of what we call wave mouth, but not bad, came down pretty easy. And then other than that, on his incisors, they're a little misaligned, but again, he holds his weight so well. Um, I'm not gonna mess with those today. I'm gonna make a note of them and we'll pull him back in and keep an eye on those. But for, and the reason I'm not messing with these is his, Molars and premolars are actually in fairly good shape, so it seems to be working for him. So I'm not gonna create a bigger issue working on incisors if these were just within what I'd expect in a normal variation of a horse that hadn't been floated in a while. So I took that into account by not messing with his incisors because these were actually in pretty good shape considering his age, his body condition score, everything else, so. This is Sammy. He came in with Hallie back middle of January. So uh, he, they've had one trim and when he came in, he was like a little chipmunk and you can still see. He has kind of a little extra here and he likes to pack a little feed in between there. So I'm gonna go in and get a good feel and see what we can get corrected in there and see if he keeps doing it. If that's a more of a habit thing or what's going on of why he likes to pack like a chipmunk. And this is what he likes to pack in there. So he literally is a little chipmunk. 
I can feel all the way back. He doesn't have any hooks, which is good, which is just where it kind of doesn't line and has a little point hanging down. There's none on the back because they're bad to get them in the very back. No wave mouth, other than just being sharp. That's the only really thing which is normal wear and tear. So we'll see what he does afterwards. That may just be something that's part of him. But, you know, whoever adopts him just needs to be aware of that. Um, he's just a little chipmunk. It's not normal, so by far, but again, if it's one of those of, may just be his bone structure that makes it easier to collect in there on him. And this, you can literally lay your thumb down on it, doesn't touch the skin up. So the old uh, hand uh, floats, the ra it's essentially a rasp. You can easily cut their mouth up really uh, bad. Uh, I hardly ever will pull out a hand rasp if it's only something I really can't get otherwise. And Dr. Palmer, who taught me floating, if it's sharp on me, I know it's sharp on them. So I do a lot more feeling than probably a lot of people just because that was just the way I was trained and it's worked over the years, so. And you never just want to sit there and grind on the tooth because you notice I'll grind a little bit and I'll stop because you can not overheat it if you just keep grinding in one spot. So that's why I constantly am moving around. I'll go back in, I'll feel how things are going, rinse out, keep it nice and moist. Again, just making certain to not overheat the teeth and cause damage that way. And that gives me time to feel in between there, is there anything loose, things of that nature too, so. And what I have found over the years is a lot of these I can that come off really quickly, they've not been floated in a while, so it's kind of fresh material to work with. You can't over float. Uh, a lot of the lay dentist people want to tell you to float every six months. Horses only have one set of teeth. They grow their whole lifetime. So if you constantly are grinding down every six months, you can shorten your horse's life at times. Now each horse grows differently. So some horses may need it, but not every one of them needs floating every six months. It's good to check them, but not every one of them is just as a routine, like failure care, well, we need to do it at six months, no. So that's one of the biggest myths I find a lot of times is over floating and it's just gonna wear your horse's teeth down faster than they, than they naturally will. And one like him where he does wanna pack feet, he would be one that's gonna be on my list to check more often just to see how fast he does grow out. That way we can get an ideal. Um, and again, whoever adopts him will let them know is just have their veterinarian keep an eye on it too for that. Okay, sweetheart, that's got you a nice touch up today. You will be on the recheck list and probably next time he comes in for failure, I'll just take a peek, fill in there to see how they're feeling. And that'll kind of, again, we'll just put him on the watch list and kind of gauge it out and see how he does with his little bit of packing there with his little extra cheeks. This is Blaze. He was bought out of a kill uh, facility in Texas. Lady paid for him and sent him to us. He was an intact stud when he came in. So I did castrate him Monday. He's done well, he's healed well. He needed some footwork. So farriers here, we're gonna get them to finish the footwork. We took x-rays, didn't find anything in his feet to worry us. Doing an x-ray of his spine, we did find evidence of kissing spine, but again, he's not shown us any issue with that. So when he goes into training evaluation, it may pop up then that it's bothering him. So again, he's young, he's pretty, he's a beautiful horse, just about nine, nine years old. So we will evaluate if he shows us an issue with the kissing spine of how we might proceed with that. So and he may not, and if he doesn't, we definitely will let the adopters know so they know to be aware of it, to keep an eye on it down the road because it doesn't automatically, immediately cause an issue with every horse, but it is something that as they get older can become an issue, which is what we tend to run into by the time we get horses, they're older and the issues are starting to pop up. So our incidence of kissing spine is always gonna be a lot higher than the average population because of that. 
Now he has no front hooks other than that he's just a little sharp down the sides along the cheeks so his hopefully won't take but just a few minutes to tune up and we'll see how he does. Good job, sweetie. You're doing good. Doing good, sweetheart. Okay, a rinse, double check, and we are done. Good job, sweetie. Good job. Okay, sweetheart. Thank you. We are just going to give him a good little overall dental checkup and float as we need to. So, and for him, his incisors are a little misaligned. So I want to see what his cheek teeth feel like and if there's anything I can do for them that will help this issue up here. Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. So. Um, again, just like, who was it? Cowboy, his cheek teeth were really good enough that I weren't going to try to mess with his alignment on the front of his. So, um, yeah, it depends on what the situation is. He's in good body condition too, like Cowboy is. So, sometimes I don't fix things they're if they're not broke. You know, even though the teeth may be a little aligned, if we're not having further issues with our molars and stuff, sometimes less is more. Thank you, darling. You're being good, Churro. He's like, I'm a good boy all the way around. Quick on the bottoms and you'll be done, sweetheart, okay? And there's not a lot of pathology of wave mouth and all that, so I'm not gonna mess with his front either. Because again, there's nothing back there. He's been functional until now. Yeah, he's functional, so I'm not going to mess again with what's not broke. Chiro done good. Uh, for his age, his cheek teeth were not really bad. They were a little sharp, so I just uh, done a quick, took the edges off of them. Uh, his insiders, you know, they were a little uneven on their length, but since there was no major pathologies in the back, no wave mouth, things like that, I didn't mess with what wasn't broke. So we'll make a note of it, keep up with it. But so far he's good body condition, doesn't appear to be having trouble. So we'll let him be as he is. This is Diego and Diego's here. And one of the issues I found when I was checking, Diego came in for something else and I was just taking a feel of him. May have been his last trim. And I found wolf teeth in there. He's a younger horse, seven, uh, which is unusual for him to still have his wolf teeth if he'd been in training or somebody just forgot to take them out because that can make them uh, react a little bit to the bit. So while I know they're in there, we're just gonna go ahead, pop them out, do a dental on him and see how he does with that. Very good. Let's go to the bottoms real quick. Okay, sweetie, you're pretty good. Cause again, he didn't need much. So his biggest thing, I'll do a little bit more on the bottom. His biggest thing was those wolf teeth that might've been an issue. So that for him training wise. And this is to remove the wolf teeth and there's different sizes of them. So I'm picking the one that fits the closest and I just go in, cut around on the gum and then gently pry, go in, twist around, cut the gum, pry out that way. So, so I got to get me a little spot in there to make some headway. And this one has a very shallow root cause I've already got it loose. I've just got a little piece of gum left. So I got to go back in there, finish cutting the gum, but 
And some of these will resorb on their own, the roots do, so they'll lose them that way. His, being older, has the root has reabsorbed a lot of it, but it still has some left. So, of the tooth there, it hadn't let go of it. There we go. So a little tiny thing, oh, wow. but can cause a world of issue. Wow, so that, really yeah, that one is a really small one. That's crazy. But again, just the right hit sometimes can cause an issue. And see, this one's yeah. a little bit bigger. This one doesn't have nearly the root that I've taken out before, because again, the roots reabsorb some on its own. So if we'd x-rayed beforehand, we wouldn't have seen a root with it. So, let me, yep, because I'm filling in, there's nothing left. So, perfect, darling. You are good to go. Come back. Diego done well. His uh, cheek teeth were not extremely sharp. They had a little sharpness to them. For him being seven, not uh, unexpected. They came off really nice and quickly as I expected they would. He didn't have any hooks, ramps, wave mouth, anything like that. And I just went in and quickly took out his little wolf teeth. He had a little tiny one on the left side. Right side was a little bigger, didn't have long roots. So again, just eliminated a possible source of bit contention for training, things like that. So um, we just done a swab of him because he'd been here through the initial strangles outbreak last fall. So at a curiosity standpoint, we're just seeing where he did have exceed, did he become more of a chronic case that he shed it occasionally in his nasal? So that was more of a curiosity point. He's not active, any signs of it. So I'm just doing it for scientific knowledge to kind of track things, what, what state we're in after the fact that way. So we've had a busy Thursday morning. We had uh, we had farrier here. Uh, I think Kimberly said there was eight or nine got trimmed farrier wise. I know dental wise, I piggybacked on a lot of them and I got seven dentals done today. So right now my dental wall is empty. Of course, there's some others that'll get on there for just routine stuff, but those are the ones I had notes of the most pressing I needed to get done. So excellent morning, everybody done pretty well. Little Hallie, uh, the little mini, of course, you know, she wanted a little extra sedation that way, but uh, that happens along the way. But other than that, everybody done well. So uh, no real bad pathologies, you know, a little wave mouth, a little hook here and there, but overall, most of them were just uh, sharp on their upper cheek teeth, which is completely normal and routine maintenance on a horse. Mm -hmm.